Welcome to this week's edition of Fast Track. Tonight, we'll have our weekly political commentary, join Brian Wolfe for his weather notes, and catch all of this week's sports highlights. But first, Brandon Davis has the latest on the blackout that caused havoc on campus. Wind gusts of up to 60 miles per hour ripped through the Midwest in Tippecanoe County Wednesday night, knocking down trees and causing nearly 8,000 homes and businesses to lose power. Power outages began around 7 p.m., but six hours later there were still over 200 buildings in the Lafayette, West Lafayette area without electricity. Tippecanoe police began directing traffic around the city as other officials began clearing the broken trees and power lines as they attempted to restore power to a darkened city. No injuries were reported as, as a result of the power loss, and by the morning, most of the debris was cleared and power was restored in Tippecanoe. However, there are still over 4,500 individuals throughout the state without power. New reports from the University of Michigan are looking into psychological disorders among college students. Laura Hoffman finds out about how Purdue students may be silently suffering. Thousands of psychological disorders go untreated every year. A new study illustrates that 25% of college-age students don't seek help for their disorders. Experts are questioning why. Last semester, Fast Track investigated the connection between Facebook and social isolation. Now, we're looking deeper and seeing a rise of psychological disorders among college students. Although Tippecanoe County has numerous treatment centers in the area, students are still refusing to seek help. Carol Mott, a therapist for Heartland Clinic in Lafayette, specializes in depression and anxiety. She said young adults acquire disorders in college because of the difficult transition. Well, because um, college students are in an important transition period in their lives, from being in their families to being out on their own, and sometimes they have a lot of adjustments in that piece, that period of time. That period of time of the traditional college student, a lot of change happens, a lot of potential difficulties happen with um, changes in their lives and they can become very stressed and sometimes it can become very severe, be depressed or a number of things. Communication experts believe that social networking sites play a role in psychological disorders among college students. Glenn yep. Sparks, Purdue professor, sat down with us last October and discussed how sites like MySpace or Facebook cause students to experience feelings of social isolation. We're, we're hooking up to technology and we're using that technology in isolation and yet we feel like we're, we're networked and we're tied into other people. Uh, what the research shows on this is that using this technology can be a very good and perhaps the only way to keep in touch with somebody who we've already established a relationship with face to face. What it's not so good at is helping us to establish new relationships where we are. Other experts believe that external stressors lead to psychological disorders Pressure to perform academically and fit in socially can lead students to turn to substance abuse. No matter what causes the psychological disorders among college students, it's important that they seek help. For Fast Track News, I'm Laura Hoffman. Purdue is one of the leading research institutions across the country. One of their programs in particular is studying information security. Laura Hoffman has more on how the Sirius program is educating students. Sirius is Purdue's Center for Education and Research Information Assurance and Security. One of the goals of the center is to empower faculty and research staff from diverse disciplines. Jean Spafford, a Purdue professor, is part of Sirius and works to engage academic institutions. On Tuesday, he lectured on the importance of abstract problem solving. He challenges students and professors to think outside the box in order to advance computer technology and security. Spafford will be awarded the 2009 ABACUS Award in March. And now here's our local weather update. Good day everyone, we're going to start off by taking a look at our weather highlight. The main question is, will we be seeing a dry week ahead? As of right now, it looks like it, and also, we should be seeing temperatures closer to normal for this time of year, around the upper 30s to low 40s. We shouldn't be seeing those temperatures that we saw last week up in the 50s and 60s. Taking a look at our almanac, we see that the normal high this time of year is 35, normal low 18. Last year we saw 17 and 2, very cold last year, and the record high set 10 years ago at 75 degrees. Taking a look at our Friday, low pressure system building in through the west, and this will bring a cold front with it. That'll bring us a chance of rain and snow moving on into Saturday. This should be heading out of our direction of Sunday off, to, off towards the east coast, bringing the high pressure system behind it, clearing out those skies for mostly sunny to sunny skies. Looks like a beautiful Sunday. Taking a look at our seven day planner, we see that Saturday looks like our best chance for rain. Moving on after that, we see cooler temperatures moving at 35 is the high on Sunday and Monday. 
Tuesday, the high of 39, but other than that, looks clear for the week ahead. Steroids, sports, and Congress all have something in common this week. Fast Track political commentator Mike Westervelt explains. I firmly believe in second chances, and I'm sure that if you think back into recent memory, you can find an example which you were glad you had another chance. So you have someone who gets a speeding ticket, for example, especially for the first time, they deserve a second chance. In my opinion, a warning. I think the same thing goes for teenagers who try weed. You give them a stern slap on the wrist and move on. Oftentimes they'll learn. But I don't feel that way when it comes to national sports figures setting poor examples. And this week, a congressional committee decided it won't go after baseball star Alex Rodriguez. He admitted to using banned drugs. The chairman cited that Congress has better things to focus on, and I, I think he mentioned something about the economy. But yes, obviously, fixing the recession needs to be the top priority. But the committee didn't even table more hearings. You know, like using the pause button, maybe come back to the issue when the economy's back on track. Instead, Congress is sending the message to the country that drug use in sports is bad, but the economy is worse. Now, never mind sports fans. What kind of a message is this to children? My little brother is in high school, and he runs track and plays lacrosse. The committee's choice to stop hearings and not recommend this case for criminal charges says that, yes, sometimes it's okay to cheat to get ahead. Ironically, if a high school baseball player was caught using an illegal substance, he'd be kicked off the team. But apparently, if you're A-Rod, you get a second chance. Coming up next on Fast Track, we'll join Brian Wolf for this week's Weather Notes. And take a look at the devastating fires that have swept through Australia. Stay tuned. Nestled in the basement of Hicks Undergraduate Library is Purdue's Digital Learning Collaboratory, or DLC for short. The DLC is a computer lab where students can rent out or reserve digital equipment such as video cameras, laptops, or digital cameras for one or three nights. The computers and video stations also have software available for video editing on both Apple and PCs. If you run into problems or have any technical questions, you can get help from the friendly staff members. For a complete listing of the DLC's hours, you can go to the website at dlc.purdue.edu.